Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a sunset poppy field landscape. It's going to be really fun. I'm going to show you step by step how to do it from start to finish. We've got some good clouds in here and some good flowers and perspective. I think it'll be a really fun lesson. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's watching chat for our live show. So if you have questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I will try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, so today's show is sponsored by Wix.com. I spent the last two weeks working on my new website, and um, I'm really excited to share it with you. And it went live yesterday, so uh, some of you have already seen it, but I've got a little clip here um, from Wix showing you kind of about how I made it. This video is sponsored by Wix.com. Wix is a free platform that allows you to build highly customizable, professional, and robust websites. You can use their hundreds of templates and enter a little bit of your information and some of your photos to create your own beautiful website. It's fully customizable. I was able to go in and change the backdrops and fonts and move things around, add my own photos, all kinds of different ways to create your own website. I was really excited to be able to do this and work with them on this. And now I will be able to have a place for my followers to go and check out all the things that I'm doing across all of my different platforms. Uh, their drag and drop tools made it really easy to move things around, add all kinds of fun widgets like a calendar of events and my traceables that'll take you straight to my Patreon page. So if you'd like to create your own beautiful custom website, just like I did for your business or personal profile, go to wix.com slash go slash Angela Anderson to get started. Alrighty, so um, a lot of fun. If you want to check that out, I've got a link down in the description um, that takes you to uh, Wix.com and also to my new website, thankfulart.com. So you can check that out. And if you're part of my Patreon crew, hopefully it'll be a lot easier to find traceables from now on. So <laughs> I'm excited about that. I worked on it very late last night. Uh, we're only uh, 90 to go, I think, out of almost 300 traceables um, that we have linked up now. So... <laughs> Still working on those and still need to get the events calendar done. But uh, anyhow, it's it was a lot of fun and I'm really excited to have that available as a new resource. All right, let's go over our lesson here. I'm using a 10 by 10 inch uh, canvas from Fredericks. This is the 12 ounce Dixie Pro Series canvas. And I haven't done anything special to it. It's just uh, pre-gessoed and ready to go. I'm going to be using some Princeton brushes. This is my number 12 bright for some of the background work. And then I'm going to have some um, different brushes. Of course, we're probably going to splatter. So I've got a toothbrush set aside there. Um, 3 8 inch, 5 8 inch Deerfoot stiplers for some of the cloud work. Um, I've got a 3 8 inch and quarter inch Willis blender. Those are the kind of rounded tip uh, stiff bristled brushes. And a... Uh, bristle fan brush here for some of the flower details of grasses and things like that foliage and then I've got a quarter inch and three-eighths inch uh, angle shader which I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to use these but a lot of times I use these for flowers and things so um, we'll see if we use those or not I've also got a quarter inch um, or I'm sorry, number four filbert that's a really small tipped. So I may use that for some of the flowers as well. And then I've got a um, number one round and a number uh, 10 aught liner um, for some of the grass details for in the, just the very foreground. We're going to put a little bit more of like detail just right in this bottom area here. And then I've got a filbert granier, which is those kind of like a rake comb brush type brush um, for some of the grasses, possibly. I'm not sure exactly. I haven't painted this yet, so we're going to work it out as we go along here. So um, let's go over our colors. I've got uh, doxazine purple. I forgot to put it out here over, the, over there where I usually do. So it's over here by the magenta doxazine purple, uh, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red, medium cadmium red light. Uh, this is Indian yellow hue. Uh, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow light, uh, thalo green yellow shade, thalo blue green shade, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and carbon black. That's actually kind of my basic palette, um, just about all the colors I ever use. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll get the whole rainbow out today. 
I've got some titanium white, um, unbleached titanium, and this is zinc white for our clouds. It's a transparent white. It makes our clouds look a little bit more fluffy and transparent. So, ooh, got some paint on my... <laughs> Touch that in one of those. I don't know which one. All right, so I've got a watercolor pencil here. For I'm not going to really do much drawing on this one. Um, I'm just going to kind of lay out our basic horizon line. Uh, and on this one, it's actually almost like straight down the middle. Um, it is curved a little bit. So I, come, I kind of found the middle point, came down just a little bit from that, and then came up just to just above the... Um, horizon line here and just did kind of a sloping arc, arc line and really may not be quite that much um, but that'll be kind of our basic horizon line our sun's going to be in here in the middle um, and then our clouds are going to I'm going to use a, a uh, blue but our clouds are going to come in here on an angle and do like this. Now, I'm going to paint this whole background, so I'm not going to paint, draw my clouds in yet, but uh, you get the idea. So that's pretty much all I'm going to do is just kind of give myself a reference point for my um, horizon line here. I'm going to dip my large number 12 brush in my water. And then I'm going to start, I'm going to go ahead and start with the sun. So I'm going to grab some of the yellow, in, um, cadmium yellow light, which is already starting to set up. Mm -hmm. Okay, real quick. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I've also got some glazing liquid over here that I'm going to use to help blendy, blend all this in. Getting some white here. What? Somebody's asked if there's <coughs> an alternative to the Indian yellow. Um, yeah, I mean, if you don't have the Indian yellow, you can just add a little bit of your um, cadmium red to your, it's kind of a, just an orangey yellow. So, um, like cadmium yellow deep is similar. So if you have cadmium yellow deep or uh, nickel azo yellow deep, like a, it's a, like a deep yellow. So I'm going to start with this very light, almost white yellow here, right on that horizon. It's picking up that red from the pencil. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just going to go all the way across here and kind of blend out my pencil line. We have, a, we have a special viewer today. Is Liam watching from the other room? Uh, well, that I don't know. Oh. Not that not that special. Not that special? No. Oh, okay. Who is it? I mean, Melissa Arsborn. <gasps> what? Yeah. Melissa? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. Pretty special. Very, very special. <laughs> That's awesome. Melissa was my neighbor once upon a time, a long time ago. We were the stroller brigade. We had Spencer and her little girl in our strollers, and we'd take up the whole road. Us and about two or three other moms would join us sometimes, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> we were, we were, the cars went around us. <laughs> All right, so I've kind of just uh, based in a few little um, spots here. I kind of did um, sort of the, I don't know why I'm putting it way up here because I was going to do blue up there, but I kind of decided to go ahead and start with the clouds up there. I got so excited about stroller patrol. <laughs> Forgot what I was doing. Stay okay. on target. <laughs> no, stay on target. So I'm adding just a little bit of phthalo blue to my ultramarine blue to get that right, really nice deep royal blue color that I like for the sky. And I'm gonna wipe off a little bit of the extra so I don't have so much paint hanging on my brush here. There we go, well that's pretty. We're just gonna start up here. Now if your canvas is super dry, you can spritz it with water before you start this and I meant to do that and I forgot. So um, I would do that before. I won't do it now because what it'll do is kind of lift off the paint we've already put down but um, Using a little bit of glazing liquid can help too. And that the canvases are kind of thirsty when, when you're first uh, working on them, especially like if they're highly textured. This one is more textured than the linen canvases that I normally use. So it's definitely um, not going on quite as smoothly here, this first coat. I'm going right over the top of that yellow that I did. That's all right. We're going to be putting clouds in here. So it's not going to matter. And as I get down toward the bottom, I'm going to add white. Get a little bit more glazing liquid here. And start working my white in. And I go right up underneath 
when I'm introducing a new color that I want to blend up into my other color. I don't go right on the blend line like right here. I go right underneath it. So I'll go right underneath and then blend upward into it. And that way you're not going to pull off your dark color. I don't want to touch that. More white. And I don't want to go any farther than about right here with my blue. So when I start getting this yellow, I'm going to back off and I'm not going to go down any lower with it. And it doesn't matter if it's not blended in. That's fine. We'll be covering most of this with um, clouds. But I don't want my sky to turn green here where it's touching the yellow. There, it, there's a slight green cast to it, but it's not. Like if we went in with like blue on top of this yellow, it would turn really green. So we want to cut it with a lot of white to keep it from doing that. All right, I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that ultramarine blue since I don't have any left on my brush and kind of do a medium version right there. And just try to kind of blend Cross and I'm going in this direction so the clouds are all kind of pointing towards the horizon line in this direction like this the ones on this side are a little bit more straight um, and kind of coming off this way but these this one this side is really angled so I'm just kind of putting all of my brush strokes in that direction so that if there are streaks like you're seeing it'll just look like they're part of our clouds and we won't have to go over and try to fix those later it'll kind of be already going in the direction that we're going to be doing our clouds. All right, so that's pretty much all I'm going to do there. I'm going to clean that out really well. Get all that blue out of it. And then pick up some more white and go back into my yellow that I had down here. And so here again, going to blend this blue into this. So what you're going to do is go down here where it's still yellow and I'm going to go across and I'm just going to do these sweeping brush strokes back and forth up into that blue. And it's going to cover over. That blue is still a little bit wet, so it's still it's going to pick up a little bit on my brush. Now I don't want to go down back into my yellow now that it's picked up some of that blue. But I can keep on going back and forth here. I'm going to get a little bit of this glazing liquid, pick up a little bit more of that yellow. And I didn't have so much blue in there that it's going to matter here. So I'm going to go again just below and blend up into my blue area. Oopsie, now I came down too low there with that. I'm going to wipe my brush off, pick up more of that yellow, come below it, push it back up where I want it to be. I don't want it down, down there. Okay, see how that works? Um, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of that light blue and mix these two together to make kind of a soft greenish color. And I'm going to use that and pull it up into the sky up here. And if your paint is starting to dry, which it might at this point, you need to just let it dry completely. Just, just um, stop. It doesn't matter if it looks good or not. Just stop, let it dry completely, and then keep on going. Um, keep your paints moist on your palette by just spraying them down. But you can use like a hair dryer to kind of speed up the process of drying. Um, and that way um, you won't start lifting your colors. Because if you blend too much while they're still, while they're drying, um, they will start to lift on you. So <clears throat> just be aware of that. I'm going to get some brighter yellow here. This is cadmium yellow medium. I'm going to come along that horizon line really low here. I'm just going to put some yellow right along that horizon line that's really bright. And I'm just kind of doing side to side. I'm not blending this in to my other colors really. I'm just kind of, it's almost like they're the clouds. It's actually not that yellow over there. I didn't, not looking at my reference photo enough. So I'm going to get some blue and do a little bit of blue over that. Not quite as yellow all the way over here. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to come below my horizon line. And that horizon line is bleeding down into our field, so it is like 
um, almost um, obscuring the line between the two. There's really not a lot of difference between the horizon line colors and the sky colors right here along very edge. It's very blurry and blendy, so I'm just going to go in with that light yellow and go just below the horizon line. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice today. Well, remember, I can do a voiceover for you. <laughs> Get some yellow, make some green into there, smudge it around. Some of that reddish orange color smudge. Yellow oxide. I'm talking. Okay. Jeez. More Again, white. It, <laughs> go for it. Go for it. No, no, that's go, no, no. Go, go, uh, go. It, it's I'll all you, promise. babe. It's all you. If, if you want this to be all about you, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> all right. Couldn't help myself. You were doing it wrong. <laughs> that's not like real life at all. <clears throat> <laughs> that never happens. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you see what I did as I added that that greenish color just below that yellow and blended it back up over it. So we got this really nice, pretty, um, just soft blend <clears throat> that kind of ends at our horizon line there. You can still see the horizon line, but just barely. That's what we want. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is losing it. <clears throat> Do you need some gummy bear medicine? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'll you get some, some when I dry it. Some potato chips. Some potato chips. I saw that on American Idol. I saw it, it you know, it works, right? It's supposed to be for singers. They eat potato chips before they sing. So oh. I've been trying it. <clears throat> I, I think it's that an it excuse to eat potato chips. I, <laughs> I think it is just an excuse to eat potato chips because it didn't really work for me today. All right. So... I added a little bit of the darker, I added a little bit of blue this time to make it a little bit more teal. And I still have some yellow oxide in here. And mostly phthalo green, though. Uh, it's a little bit light still, but we'll start with this and we'll darken it up later. So just quickly back and forth. I'm working that paint down in and I'm really pressing down hard on these white parts to get that paint worked in and then I'm where I want it blended I'm picking a little bit more water here I am pressing a little bit lighter there we go and I don't want to go any farther than about halfway up here with this really dark color I want to stay fairly light so I'm going to pick up some more of that light green from up here and just blend back over Try to get those blended together. And again, if I do this side to side, it's okay. If I have streaks, it's not, it doesn't have to look completely like super soft blended. We're going to have lots of flowers and things over the top of this, so it doesn't really have to be exactly perfect. I'm going to let Mark take that really quick and blow dry it for me. <clears throat> Thank you. And while we're doing that, did we get a Yoda magnet? Yeah, I already showed it last okay. week. Right. Somebody was just asking, I thought we did. But. Yeah, we showed it last week. Uh, May, it says, do or do not try. There is no try. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the way, may the fourth be with you. Yeah. Um, so I was going to show you the magnet we got this week from Vanetta Harper. She was asking about it on our Thursday art chat. She's in my Thursday Facebook group the for patrons um we are working on a floral still life this month so i'm really excited about getting started on this but she made this out of a um old um like advertising magnet you know where it's got the like you know car dealerships or whatever um and she painted over it she just did it and so really clever um so thank you vanetta and she's going to be getting one of our stickman magnets i'll be sending that out to her so i send those out for magnets for mark we 
been covering his board up over here. Um, his soundboard is metal, and um, it's a lot better than his hobo fort that he had before, <laughs> so, uh, like boxes. Um, so it's it's a lot prettier to look at now. It's covered with all these beautiful magnets from all over the world. So thank you to those who've been sending those to us, and thank you to Vanetta for our, her beautiful hand-painted or Arizona magnet. Arizona is definitely uh, close to our hearts. We got married in Arizona, so um, anyhow, if you are um, interested in uh, what I was talking about with the Patreon group, um, I don't have a picture of it. I was going to show you the picture of the the group um, photo that we're going to be working off of, but I don't. I didn't print it out yet. Um, but you can look on um, my. Uh, community tab on YouTube here. If you click on the community tab um, above my uh, homepage, if you click on my name or my photograph under this video, it'll take you to my channel homepage. And then um, click on the community tab. It'll show you the upcoming videos for the month of May um, 2019. And you can see the ones that we're going to be doing for Patreon folks. So if you're interested in that, you can sign up at patreon.com it'll have the traceable for this um available as well for the dollar level so yeah all right. and now they can go to your website after that and just I click and find know. it super easy it is super easy yep i'm excited it's gonna be awesome just have to get it all set up i realized that all of my um follow me doesn't actually go to anything but the, my home page on my website so it doesn't like take you to my Facebook page or anything like that. <laughs> Although my Facebook page is there <laughs> in a separate section, but <laughs> so it's not all working yet. I'm still trying to figure it all out, but um, okay. I still have a little bit of pain in there, but I think it's going to be good. I'm just going to, I'm not going to leave it in my water. I'm just going to let it set off, off to the side here um, so that it stays moist. And every now and then I'm just going to dip it back in my water. Um, so let me... Uh, before I can clean it all the way out. I don't want it to dry out. Okay, so I'm going to use some chalk here and I'm just going to um, draw in my clouds. So from this corner over here, there's one that kind of goes up in here, does like that, and then it angles off this way and meets up with the bigger sister or brother, whatever. Right there, and then there's another little one kind of right in here, and then right in here, and then there's a big one that comes out right here, goes all the way down almost straight and across just above the sun, right in here like that. Okay, you probably can't see much of that, but it's there. And then um, our for our flowers, we can kind of split our from our horizon line down. We're going to kind of have this area down in here that's our foreground that's got kind of uh, poppies kind of doing like that. And then there's a dark area in here. And then there's a little bit smaller poppies back in here um, up to about the halfway mark here. And then all of these back in here are going to be really, really small little dots. So we're going to split it halfway for this foreground section and then split that back section again for the next level of poppies and then everything above that is going to be smaller to get our perspective right okay i think that's good let me grab my uh yeah let's grab the angle brush i'm gonna put in my sun a little bit brighter grab a little bit of white here I need to put out more glazing liquid because I'm running out. And mark where that is. So it's right about there. I'm going to put that white in there. I'm going to wipe my brush off on my towel. And I'm just going to go around the edges and pat them out. And if you need to, you can get a little bit of water on your brush so that it's a little bit moist, but it should work pretty well for you with this these heavy body acrylics this works pretty well I have to do a lot of work sometimes it can help if you wet down your canvas first before you try to do um, that technique too so you could try that but um, 
if it doesn't work for you the first time. But there we go. So, what are you doing, honey? I'm trying to see my necklace. Oh. Somebody asked me if we got one from Massachusetts. Um, I don't think we did. Just keep painting. Okay, I've got the cadmium yellow light. Now this is like full strength here. I'm going to come up under here with this angle brush and I'm going to tap in right around that sun. And all along the horizon line there. And I'm going to get some more of that white and just kind of go back over just right around that sun there. Make sure that's staying bright. A little bit more of the white. I'm just trying to kind of make sure that it's kind of blended into our background. I don't want it to look harsh right here between this the blend between these two colors. So I'm going to get a little bit more of my white here. And just kind of soften up that horizon line again. That white really goes almost goes down to the horizon line, so I had it a little bit high. Now we'll be adding flowers up in here so it won't look like the sun or clouds, but it'll be basically the same color as it right underneath our flowers. Yeah, so I'm going to go down a little bit lower. That sun. Okay. There we go. Alright, I'm going to switch to my uh, dear foot stippler, I'm going to start with the three, it's inch one, and we're going to mix up some ultramarine blue. I'm just going to scoop up a little bit here and a little bit of that burnt umber, more blue than burnt umber. I'm making a gray. This will be our gray for our clouds, and it's going to be almost this dark. I'm going to pull in a little bit of this white from our sky to soften it up just a little bit, but it's going to be pretty dark. I'm going to go ahead and go up in here. Yeah, that's about where we want it. And I'm going to scrub that in. You can hear the texture, right, of the canvas. If it's not showing up softly along the edges, wipe off more of the paint. You may have too much paint in your brush there. You want to have it soft along those edges. I'm going to get a little bit of the glazing liquid. That'll help soften it up as well. Make it a little bit more transparent. There we go. Just make sure you don't scrub too much in one area. That is what will cause your um, paint to lift off with this brush. These scrubby brush techniques. So if I was to run out of paint and just keep on scrubbing in the same area over and over again what's going to happen is it's going to start drying and everything around my the center of my brush is going to start drying but the center is going to stay wet so it's going to like keep lifting off and you're going to end up with this weird halo looking thing so I'm not going to go any farther because I don't want it to actually do that but just showing you what can happen. So just kind of don't stay in one place too long. If you don't get enough color down the first try, it's better to just do layers than to lay down too much color right at first. So I would ra much rather have to go back in and add more color later than to lay down too much color. And I'm going to grab that background blue now, and I'm going along those edges and just softening that up, blending those in a little bit. If you need to, you can mix up some of your background blue before you do this. Um, this looks kind of funky shaped right now, but we're going to add other colors to it. So 
This is just our first layer. That's one thing with clouds is that um, they do look worse before they look better. They kind of, they don't, <laughs> they don't really look right at first. And I think that's why it freaks people out about painting clouds because they're like, I can't do it because they kind of quit in the ugly stage. You got to kind of just push through and keep on adding layers until they look right. Um, there's a couple of problems that people have and what, you know, one of them is just not, you know, stopping like before they're done and also not blending out your edges really well going in with too much paint having it too thick um, if you keep your paint really thin and soft you get these soft fuzzy that's what you want is that kind of soft fuzzy look so just if you need to wipe your brush on your paper towel every time before you go to your paint your uh, canvas you might get into the habit of just you know having less paint on your brush especially when you're using a brush like this and this brush you don't add water to either i didn't mention that before but um it works best dry so i'm going to grab some of that blue and i'm going to go along those edges there and just soften them up a little bit i'm kind of just going in little circular motions here and as I get down closer to the bottom here, I'm going to add more white to soften that color so the grit's not as gets softer and lighter as you get closer to the sun. Not as much shadow happening. So I'm going to add a little bit of this lighter gray up in here too. You can hear Liam in the other room fussing at his mom. We got our little grandson staying with us this month, so this is actually last we we did he was here Tuesday night too, but he she had him in the other room. I told her not to bother. We like hearing him. <laughs> and he made a special guest appearance at the end of this week's uh on YouTube, Facebook, yeah, art chat, yeah. in your art taking flight group. Yeah, he did. He was up from his. He was napping during my thankful art chat on earlier. So, with the on Thursdays, I do an art art chat, just kind of chat with folks and answer questions and stuff, and talk about what we're working on that week in my Facebook group, Thankful Art. Just that's a public group, and then I have another one that's for. Patreon folks, and we do a lesson in there. That's the one where we're going to be doing that special still life painting. But he was, we painted um, in there, and then at the very end, he he was awake, so he came in and said hi. He was still kind of zoned out. He was <laughs> he was just kind of like, whoa. <laughs> the studio is pretty exciting. He, he's like, lots to look at. <laughs> All right, so here you can see we're kind of already, it's coming together pretty quick. I dipped into some of this blue color that we had left over from the sky. That's why I was saying to, you know, keep your palette wet while you're working. And so you can dip back into that. But you, we already know what colors those were, so it doesn't have to be exact. We can mix up a little bit more. That was just a mostly ultramarine blue and a little bit of the phthalo blue <coughs> that we did for our background in um, sky. Here's to get a little bit more of that lighter color. And the light's hitting. You no, know, so like like noonday sky clouds, you'd have your highlight on the top and the shadow on the bottom. These clouds, since the sun is low, the highlight's gonna be on the bottom and the shadows are on the top. So wherever the sun is is where your light, um, you know, you can pretty much tell where your light's gonna hit underneath there. So I'm going to grab some of this yellow. And ooh, that's pretty. Do the yellow now underneath here. So we've got our dark area. And if it's too much, like this brush is a little bit big, so I'm going to start switching over to my <coughs> smaller brush here. <clears throat> okay. 
So I'm going to grab my, uh, let's do the three eighths inch Willows blender. Actually, no, well, let's do the quarter inch because that'll just, yeah, we'll do the quarter inch. Grabbing some of that yellow. So this is just the yellow from down here. We're going to use it up in our clouds. So now that we've got our gray in there, we're going to kind of rim all of our clouds with this light yellow. And what I can do is I grab this uh, three five eighths inch. I don't have a mop brush currently, but um, you can use it to kind of tap out the edges. And I might soften it up just a tiny bit of water, not a lot, and just tap off those edges to soften them up. Scrub them in a little bit. If you have a mop brush, you could use that instead. I'm really excited. We're going to be working with Princeton um, in the coming months, and we'll be adding um, how-tos on their websites on how to use the, all the different brushes that say, Princeton carries. So, say what? I know. It's going to be exciting. I'm really excited about it. I have no idea when I'm going to get it done because with Liam here, I'm completely distracted by baby stuff. But we'll we've got it'll be work as you go. <laughs> be a little bit. A little bit at a time. <laughs> but Our, we're going to be going over and showing all the different brushes and how you use them. So in different videos for their websites. So I'm excited about that. And I'll have more information about that once they start going live on their website. So we're so going to show the clip from the, the time I painted on your Patreon group. That was a very unique technique. I don't remember that. When Did I painted I the when I painted the roadhouses... Oh, yeah. The row houses? Row houses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to add some gray to my yellow. I just moved on there. I didn't even comment. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. Uh, I've never seen you paint that way before, so I figured, you know, it was a different <laughs> technique. I see. I see what you're saying. Oh, I'm scrubbing out those edges just to soften them up a little bit. I'm grabbing some more of that darker color that's right behind it. And blending the two together. So they're already starting to kind of come together. Just a couple layers here. Yeah, they're starting to look more like we want them to. And then it can help if you just kind of, let's get some of this zinc white here. And I still have the gray on my brush. So I'm going to use the zinc white because it's transparent, so it'll go on a little bit softer than my white was. I'm going to just kind of go on there. Add a little bit of it there. I'm going to add a little bit of it down below this section here. And... Really, I don't, I don't need to do it exactly, exactly the same as the reference photo. So it's kind of, as long as I get the sizes right and do the light color on the bottom, I can change the shape of the clouds pretty, pretty much however I want to. So can you, so if you want less clouds, you can. You know, leave more of that blue sky showing. Whatever you're painting. You look up, I would suggest look up pictures of clouds, you know, if you do want to change something about it and just have, you know, a perfect picture reference. It always helps if you're looking to make it more realistic looking, you know. If you're not, then by all means just... Or in most places, go. you can go outside 
and look up. Really? True? And yeah. see clouds. Huh. Uh, most places. That's weird. Yeah. Just for a reference. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but I'm not going to get a, like a pictures work sunset well. like this from where we live. Just saying. You just said looking at clouds for reference. So, well, mm. I meant sunsets. I'm not going to try to talk talk to you about this. <laughs> We're not going to discuss this right now. We're not discussing it. <laughs> Grab some more yellow. I still have that gray on my brush. A little bit of the zinc white. I'm going to go in here and work on these. Having a little bit more. My arm is sore today. You know what? My arm is sore. <laughs> Carrying around a baby all week. <laughs> It's like my arm is so sore. I'm like, why is my arm sore? Oh, that's why. Yeah. Okay. It makes perfect sense. I'm like, I have only been painting for like, what, 40 minutes? My arm's already sore. That's hilarious. Okay. Tapping in little, little baby, baby clouds here. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll be, it's like a workout having a baby around. I'm telling you. I was just telling Mark, it was like, once once he's a toddler, we're going to be in for it. We're going to be chasing him around all the over the house. Yeah, so gonna be, our um, house is no longer baby-proof. No, proof. it's not baby-proofed at all. So it's going to be like, don't touch that. Don't don't touch that. We're just going to get a shirt that says, don't touch that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to baby-proof it because I don't want to be that kind of a grandma. <laughs> it's like, don't touch anything in our house. Everything's too precious. <laughs> That ain't happening. Okay. Oh, it's looking good. I'm liking it. All right. Starting to come together. Very fun. I, somehow this kind of turned into a big, huge sameness blob, so I'm going to kind of break it up a little bit. There. Now the paint's wet underneath, so it's kind of mixing with it as I tap over it. That gray is still kind of wet. Makes it easier to get that soft look. And some more yellow. Some more of my zinc white. Cadmium yellow is opaque, so um, add more of the white than the yellow so that it'll stay a little bit more soft looking. And I'm going to go up underneath where we've already done and do even brighter, like highlights. And go right along that rim. Above. Use a little bit of the glazing liquid to kind of soften up those edges. Okay, and then if it gets too much, like I feel like there's no uh, no cloud, gray cloud anymore, I'm going to grab a little bit more of that gray blue and just come down over and work that in to that edge. And that yellow is still wet, so it'll blend in really nicely for us. Very nice. Okay, coming together pretty quickly. And this cloud has very little of this yellow. It's pretty dark, so I'm not going to do much right there. Just a little bit right there. And then as it comes down here, we're going to have to add more of that gray because we didn't, we kind of stopped with the gray because it was, the brush was too big right here. So we'll pull some of that gray down and into here. A little bit of that gray, a little bit of my zinc white. So it's a little bit lightened version. Maybe a little bit of yellow with it. There we go. And we're coming right up underneath this cloud bank here that we've already done. This bigger kind of 
one right in here. We haven't really finished it yet. But making these clouds a little bit softer right here, closer to the sun, will also kind of help that our look. Make it look more realistic. What are you laughing at? Oh, I'm just cracking myself up. <laughs> don't don't mind me. Okay. I'm just thinking of that of Brian Regan. Every time you say sun. The big wheel one's the sun. <laughs> 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 Every time. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to be thinking that too, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That'll teach you to ask me what's going on over here. <laughs> what your brain is thinking of. <laughs> Stupid uh, things. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So I need kind of a bright... I'm adding a little bit of my titanium white to my zinc white just to make it a little bit more opaque. And like right in here, there's a really bright white cloud right here. The underside of that one. And it kind of wanders off over here. in these clouds. My gray is almost gone. Grabbing some of that zinc white. Now I'm going to go over and just soften up the edges of this new gray there. No pressure, but the world is just tuning in just to watch you. Just let The you world know. is? Yeah, we got South Africa, we have oh, nice. Germany, we have Austria. Isn't that cool? Canada. All the usual unusual suspects Love are it. tuning in. Lots of first time. Love it live viewers well good welcome mm -hmm. we're really glad to have you watching with us today we just get together to paint hang out for a little bit on saturdays and tuesday nights <laughs> and you can share it with me if you paint with me you can go on that facebook group i was mentioning earlier and show me what you painted for my tutorials so we have a lot of fun Gotten to meet some really nice people from all over the world, like Mark was saying. It's pretty amazing. I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush here. I'm going to grab my uh, 3 8 inch Wills blender, pick up a little bit of water, and my purple with my ultramarine blue. I'm going to come up here and darken up this corner here. Just a little bit. And if it goes over the top, I'm going to grab a little bit of glazing liquid and just kind of glaze over these clouds here. It'll soften up that color. So if you go a little bit too bright with your color, this is something that you can do. Instead of having to paint over your cloud, you can just go in with some darker color that's tinted with some glazing liquid. It's just the glazing liquid just thins it out 
so that you can control how much of the paint actually goes on the canvas. So I'm just kind of glazing over some of these clouds that are far away that I want to darken up in these corners up in here. And deepen up that blue. It just felt like it was a little bit too soft. So just darkening up that. And it's also kind of glazing is a great way to make your clouds look softer and more integrated with the sky giving it that kind of soft blue going over the top and you don't have to do all of them just you know see where you may want a less a little bit softer look and then go over it with these whatever color you chose I could have done the gray but I kind of wanted my clouds to have a little bit of this purpley tone just slightly so this color helps me and also um, you know it can help you kind of blend from one color to another if you had kind of a harsh blend in here that you couldn't really get the colors quite where you wanted them to be you can use this glaze to um, soften you know like it, like say I wanted to soften the color between there you can kind of go um, over the top and really kind of just smooths it out visually almost I know it's hard to explain but it's a really good tool okay so I don't want to go too far down because this color is so dark um, but I actually am now that I say that I am going to go down here I'm going to get a little bit of purple with this purpley blue color and I'm going to add my um, let's grab some Indian yellow here. I want more of the quinacridone. I'm not sure that's the right color. Let me see what this looks like. Why watered down? Eh. I wanted a little bit more purple. Let's grab a little bit of the purple. Okay, that's good. So I'm going to do down here, there's these low clouds, and I'm going to add a lot of zinc white here soften it up I don't want it too dark too quickly so right above my horizon line so there's my horizon line right here I'm gonna go right in here and just using this brush sideways here and just gonna scrape in some clouds that are really low and don't don't go too close to there I want it to kind of end right there and then I'm gonna go above right in here tint these ones Grab a little bit of glazing liquid. Just gonna just push that paint around. Soften it up. Use the glazing liquid over here on this one too. And I'm gonna wipe my brush off. bit of that purple. Let's grab a little bit of the unbleached titanium. Tap in a little bit of that. Grabbing that ultramarine blue. The ultramarine blue has a lot of purple in it. Gonna grab white. And just going to. Remember, I said there wasn't as much yellow over here as I put it. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue over here. Grab that glazing liquid to make it blend in. There we go. 
just glazed that blue over the top. That was blue and ultramarine blue and white. And then I've got this pink, pinkish purple cloud here that we're working on. There we go. Okay, that's better. <coughs> I can even do more blue over here. I can see there some blue streaks. Let's get a little bit of the thalo blue and white. Thalo blue, ultramarine blue and white. Are there any? This is our sky color. Are there any recommendations on doing this on a larger? canvas um if you're doing it larger just use bigger brushes so you do the same kind of techniques you could use a um like a sea sponge for your clouds that's what i've used to be sea sponge before because it gets a big area or you can use like a large um large uh, chip brush like this for your clouds so, you know, depending on the size canvas you're using. Grab that quite a little bit of the cadmium yellow, medium. And I still have that blue in my brush, and I'm going to go under here and highlight that cloud there. And there's another cloud here that we haven't put in yet. It's kind of right underneath. And a little bit of this brighter yellow. A little bit of this yellow up in here. I'm sorry. It helps if you angle your canvas. You can see how I do that. Um, it's more natural if you're painting kind of, oh, what did I just do? Um, did I, oh, I did that right there. I touched my canvas when I was gesturing with my hand. Um, it's a little bit more natural painting left to right. So... If that's if you're righty, if you're lefty, maybe not. I don't know, but if you're right-handed, if you're right-handed, don't paint right to left like Angela does. Yes, because you tend to get your hand in the paint. I do a lot. I'm still trying to teach her how to paint, but <laughs> it's not really catching on. I like I like putting my hand in my paint. <laughs> Okay, so I just took the yellow and kind of softened up the edges of that cloud a little bit, went above it, and I'm going to tap in on this one. And there's a lot of this kind of yellow stuff going on up in here, so I'm just going to kind of tap in some random yellow clouds and then grab more of my white. Actually, I want my zinc white. I want to wipe my brush clean, so it's mostly just white, a little bit of the yellow. Go up underneath here and soften up those edges of my clouds. Add this yellow yellow and if you have a little bit of that reddish in your brush that's fine just go with it I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt umber to my my blue here mix more of that gray this color here I'll put it over here so we know what it's supposed to be grab my white that's a zinc white and right in here. And it's, it's 
not super dark, so. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to let it set and we'll work on our flowers and then come back and dip my brush in the water there so it stays hydrated. Same thing with all these that I've been using. Just keep them wet while I'm working on other stuff. <clears throat> all right, so I need to decide. I think I think I'm just going to use this. This is my um, quarter inch angle brush here. And we're going to make up, I'm going to use this color that we're using in this cloud here. Here, so that was the quinacridone, a little bit of purple. And some of this Indian yellow, which I'm still planning on using in the sky. I haven't yet. Um, so we're going to use this color, add some white to it, so it's nice and soft. Maybe add a little bit of the cadmium red light, so it's a little bit brighter. And we go right, now this is where we're going to kind of um, define our horizon line. So I want to go super light at first with this. I think I need it more red, just a little bit more. There we go. And put out some more white. <clears throat> okay. That's good. So I'm going to do the tiniest, tiniest little dots. So I'm just using the tip of my brush and I'm pointing straight down. And if I want to, actually, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow. Mix that in. A little bit of my cadmium red. And my white. The yellow in your red will help it from turning to pink. Yeah, that's more closer to what I want. Kind of a more of an orangey red. And right up here, I mean, I'm barely touching down that tip of my brush. I'm going just right on or above that horizon line. Keep these really small. <coughs> If you get them too big, like I got one there, I can use my background color, which is kind of that orangey green color, or yellowy green, I mean. And it's mixed in with this red, which is actually going to help tone it down too. And I can put in some of these dots with the green. Just a slight different shade than what we've got right now. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so we're just going to keep on going now. And we'll go. the closer down we go, the more the darker we're going to get. But adding a little bit more the bright red here and try to keep it random so I'm just going to go in up and down with this so I'm not getting them 
space too close together or too matchy matchy. You don't want a, like a pattern of matchy matchy. And then back, they kind of cluster together, so you can kind of do a few dots and then leave a space and then do a few more dots and then leave a space and do a few more. That's kind of more like the natural way they grow. So. And when we get to about this mark right here, we're going to make start making them a lot bigger. Um, get about halfway to this mark here, which was the halfway mark, right? So here's our horizon line. Halfway is our foreground. The other half is kind of our midground. And then this back area here is a lot smaller. So our about half of that, half of half, right? Right in here, we're going to keep them really, really, really tiny. And then we can start gradually making them a little bit bigger. And if you want to, you can kind of give yourself a reference size. So like the mid middle sized ones in here, I want to be about that big or that big, right? Then the foreground ones we're going to make closer to this big, All right? Then the middle, middle are gonna be maybe half of that, like that. I don't know why I just did those all in a straight line. I'll break that up. <laughs> but you can kind of see how the difference, hopefully, between the sizes. So that's what we're going to shoot for so that we get that illusion of depth. And they do not have to look like flowers. Do not make these like a little perfect circle. Flowers way in the distance, you're not going to be able to tell that they're flowers at all, but your eye will make them, you know, interpret it as flowers. So your eye will do the work. All you have to do is draw pink dots, do dots, dot, 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 little dabs that overlap and super fun. Takes a while. Just kind of find your little Zen spot and chill out, put on some music and dab in some dots here. As I'm getting down closer, I'm also, not only am I um, making them bigger, but I'm also making them more saturated with color. So I'm adding more of the deeper reds. And I think I'm going to try it with my, let me try it with my filbert brush here and see what kind of shapes I can get with my filbert. Filbert's got that rounded tip, so it's really good for flowers usually. I'm going to see what it looks like. Yeah, it's too big for up there. Okay, so it's still too big for back there. It'll probably work for our foreground. Let's try a little small round. Try a number one round here. That works. I think I still like my angle brush. I just like that it it makes them more. I don't know. It's easier to me. You find the brush that's easy for you. So it doesn't have to be the same exact one that I'm using. You know, if you like doing your flowers a certain way, just by all means do it that way. I was going to say, I don't want them breaking into your studio to get the same brush you're the using. The same brush I'm using, yeah. That'd be awkward. That yeah, would be awkward. <laughs> it happened to Clive. Somebody showed up at his studio once. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This was years ago when I first started on YouTube. He was fairly new too, but he I think he'd been doing it longer than me at that point. Yeah. So that's when I we uh started putting we got went out and got the post office box. <laughs> it's like <laughs> note to self, don't use your and some real address. <laughs> and some cameras. Uh huh. And some cameras. Yeah, and some so security cameras, yeah. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Okay, super fun. All right, so back in here too, 
Uh, before I do too much more of the flowers, I do want to have a little bit of detail in the grass. You really can't tell much uh, farther back, but as we get down towards the front here, we are going to be starting to see grasses. So I do want to put some of that in. So I'm going to make a dark green. I'm going to use the ultramarine blue with my phthalo green. Make a dark green. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to give it a little bit of glazing liquid just to make it flow a little bit easier. And I'm going to use some white. A little bit of my yellow oxide for the ones farther back here. So I'll use the darker color closer up, but the ones back here I'm going to... Now, keep these very small, actually. I just want to tap probably back in here because I don't want... I'm just going to tap in a little bit of dark color. I'm going to have to go back over my reds here. But that's okay. Okay, now in here is where... Kind of the middle area here is where you're going to start seeing the grasses. And I've got a little bit of red on there, but that's alright. It's going to look kind of messy. That's fine. It's It's... It'll all come together in the end. Grab a little bit of that darker color now. There we go. I'm gonna go right along that edge between that we drew here. Somebody asked, would it not have been easier to put the grass in first? Probably. Good point. Wow. I think they're throwing you some shade. I know. It's fine. But it's still Gucci. Well, I got so excited about putting my flowers in, I didn't realize we were getting so far down. Up in here, we're not going to need the grass, but down in here we do. So before we went any farther we needed to get in some grass there but some of those flowers would be behind the grass possibly in the background Mo possibly possibly get some glazing liquid here with my kind of that lighter green I'm going to just Glaze over. This will soften up. Make them look farther away. But also add this green in here that we want a little bit more green than yellow. Up in some of these areas. If you pick up your red, that's okay. Pick up a little bit of my yellow. It's my sun color. That's that color right here, right? I'm just going to tap in along in here. There we go. And we are gonna, we are going to um, add some yellow glow in here. So just keep that in mind. It's actually going to be even more softened towards the end of the painting. Okay. 
Here we go. You just trying to kind of show what I'm doing here better. That's really the, you probably uh, like like they said. I I honestly like the the um, glaze over the top of this, so I probably would do that even still. So get you know do this little bit and then just glaze, but wait for it to dry. I didn't wait for it to dry, so that's why I'm having to kind of fix it right in here. So if you wait for it to dry, you won't have that issue with having to kind of fix that little bit right there. But glazing with that. Uh, it's a little bit of a yellow underneath, right? It was that kind of yellow sky color. And now we're just kind of glazing with just a slight tint of green just in our area where our flowers are. It's kind of softening over the top of them a little bit. Pushes them back visually, makes them look smaller farther away. And if you wanted to, to get that same effect, we could add green to our red. So we could make that same color just by adding some green to our red. And so instead of glazing, you could kind of do your background a little bit darker. And then when you do your red, just add a little glaze, gray, green to it and it'll make it look farther away. It'll make it look more kind of desaturated. Okay. And then right in here. You can do a few like darker and you can see how Doing those darker red over the top there now, it's going to make those other ones that are farther away look. Push those back. Anytime you have a darker, brighter, more saturated color, it's going to pull your eye forward. It's going to look like it's closer to us. So we can put some really bright red ones right in front of that line between that background and there. And these ones will automatically look forward and for farther forward. It'll obscure all this kind of stuff that's going on underneath. And most of this grasses and things are going to be covered up by our flowers, so we're only gonna be able to see a little bit of it through. I'm gonna use a little bit of that bright yellow there. A little bit of my white. Let's use a little unbleached titanium and then grab a little bit of that green. So it's just kind of a light bright yellow color similar to what we had in our background. It's these ones here that I put down that were really these example ones that I've put down that are kind of the problem ones. Setting down my ink, my fan brush here. And then I look like, you know, it's got like a line there. So what I'm going to do is kind of go over the top. See that? And it'll hide that line. So go with the darker color over the top. And it'll push that line. Soften it up. And then I can go back in with my lighter color and go over the darker so it's always helpful with the, with these kind of grasses to kind of work from the farther distance forward so that each new layer is overlapping the previous one. And pushing it back a little bit visually. I'm just trying to kind of like add some light and dark variation in my grasses here. And 
little glazing liquid kind of helps it flow a little bit better. This canvas is pretty textured, so it doesn't want to make those long grasses for me. So if I thin my paint down, it'll work a little bit better for me and get a little bit longer lines out of my fan brush. So I'm just using variations of that light yellow and that ultramarine blue and green. If somebody's not on speaking terms with their fan brush, yeah. what other brush could you use? <laughs> they, they're not on speaking terms. I like that. Um, we could do the same type of thing with this brush here. Let's try it with the... Oops, I still have left it in there too. All kinds of brushes we're using today. I've got a whole pile of wet brushes over here. Um, it won't work as well with this brush, but you can if you kind of do it right. You can get some grasses with it. The larger grasses I would definitely, you could do with this. Um, you could try it with the rake brush. The rake brush you definitely need your paint thinned out though. So um, that's the, or the filbert granier. So let's try that. I'm gonna add a little bit of glazing liquid and quite a bit of water. And my ultramarine blue to darken it up. Add a little bit of red, even more actually basically purple so you could use <laughs> instead of doing what I just did you could add purple to your green too either way it darkens it up I added blue and red or purple same deal <laughs> I just realized what I've done okay all right so here this is it. A little bit softer, softer touch. Yeah, see if I press down too hard, I get like a solid line here. I'm gonna go back over that. What? Remember that Hollywood couple a year or two ago? They got a divorce, but they called it something else like it was Gwyneth Paltrow and and um, the something separation and or... the guy from Coldplay. I can't remember Chris Chris something, the lead singer of Coldplay and yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, they got a or was it was it uh, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, one of them. I don't, I don't remember. I just remember laughing at it was some kind of a something separation or mm -hmm. a conscientious or... Something. I think it was Gwyneth Paltrow. I think it was them. A conscious uncoupling. Yeah, somebody said. that's what it is. Yep. <laughs> that's so, the word. Sounds like people are having that with their... With their fan brushes. With their brushes and, and uh, uh, canvases. Awesome. <laughs> Love it. I feel your pain. I've been there. Trust me, I definitely have favorite brushes. You know, there's definitely ones that I like using more that, and then others. Oops, okay. So I don't want the super long grasses way back here because that's not going to look right. So I want to break that up. <laughs> I got a little happy there with my, my brush. So I want to keep these brushes back here a little bit shorter and then the ones back in here and the foreground I can do longer, but um, these ones back in here, I can actually like this better than the fan brushes working pretty good for me. The key is making it thin, the paint thin. Otherwise you, you're just gonna be fighting this and getting these big blobs, you know, like pressing down too hard to get your paint to go onto the canvas. 
Right. So, and I've covered up a lot of the red that was in the middle here. This is fine. We'll put them back in. No biggie. Gonna go in with some yellow and some of my white here. Or my glazing liquid, a little bit of the, what the glazing liquid does is make it stick. When you add too much white to acrylic, heavy body acrylics, they lose their binding. So adding the glazing liquid helps keep it from doing that. From it, it just binds it to the canvas. So that's all I'm doing by adding the glazing liquid. I'm not wanting to make the paint more transparent at all. Um, just want to make it stick to the canvas better. Okay, so just kind of trying to keep this random. There is kind of a dark area right in here that I'm trying to preserve without making it look like it's all lined up right there, but... These ones down here, I can do a little bit longer. And I'm trying to overlap them too so that they kind of crisscross each other. in our sun color. A little bit of green. If you do have an area where you just kind of get a real big, like, you know, problem one, you can always go back in and kind of soften up that outside edge of it. Or you can put a flower over the top of it. So just kind of know that going in. Nothing's set in stone with this. You know, don't. Don't let it stress you out. Just and you can I mean you could just do the Well, I don't know. I was gonna say you could just do the red over the top, but I think the grasses really do add some, something, so we'll see. We'll see once we get our flowers going on top here. So I'm just doing one more layer, really bright. And this time I'm, whoops, I don't want it that dark or that bright right there. Press down a little bit too hard. forth here trying to make sure that I'm kind of covering up my bottoms of my grasses so 
they all look like they're kind of overlapping one another. So as, as I'm using these, adding these lighter colors, I'm going back in here now with the darker and kind of touching up the bottoms of some of them, just to make sure. They're blended in. And you can also use this brush kind of on its edge and it'll make thinner lines. It'll still kind of break up, but you can maybe control it a little bit better from looking like it's, you know, these big, big, huge grasses. And then I am going to just come in here and kind of dot because there's all those little seed pods. So there's like dots. Maybe not this brush. I don't think this one's doing it quite like I want, but mm, I think with the fan brush I could get that look. Really trying to make kind of a haphazard looking jumble of shapes here. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's kind of soft and blendy. You can still see the stalks of some of them, but they're not too obvious where they start or stop. And we've got these light colored ones over the top of these dark areas here that pushes our perspective back where we want it. Okay. So now we can go back to our flowers. Phew. <laughs> I was like, flowers, let's paint flowers. I forgot all about my grass. This grass is not nearly as fun. At least you left the sun this time. I did leave the sun. Okay, so I'm going to go back over some of that green that we kind of lost. I can't remember some of our flowers just to brighten up just a few of them. I don't have to do them all. And I added that green to my brush here so that I've got like a lighter version of my red. Cadmium red medium with the green, the light green from my background. Okay. And then as I get closer here, I'm going to add more and more of my brighter reds and press down a little bit harder. I'm going to grab a little bit of my cadmium red light too. I use a little bit of it on a few of these, especially like the ones like close to the middle here where they might be a little bit more yellow from the sun. clusters so let's do some of them over here the poppy flowers are kind of fan shaped so they do this kind of bowl they're um, either sort of ovals like that zoom in hun a little bit 
So if I hold my brush just slow, at a slight angle and set it down, I can get this kind of V-shape, which is really kind of what we're looking for for a lot of these. And then if I set the tip straight down and kind of pull it just a little bit, I can get kind of more of an oval shape like that. So both of them are kind of what we're looking for. So I'm going to do, I'm sort of holding it at an angle and sometimes I'm turning it so that the tip is straight down, but... can see how I'm kind of twisting it as I paint so that I'm getting these random shapes with my poppies. Okay, go ahead and zoom back out. I was off camera already. You get the idea and doing different sizes as I get down toward the bottom I am going much pressing down much harder and doing a lot, lot bigger flowers so this bottom half here remember it's where we're gonna start adding different sizes and do some little small dots because there are little flowers like peeking through some of these grasses so Make sure you're you're doing some of the kind of smaller depths too. Even in your foreground. Okay. So I'm just kind of finding these ones that were farther back here and adding dots over the top of some of them to kind of brighten them up. And then I feel like we need some of that kind of that color here blended down into this one. So I'm going to use some of that softer red on some of these down here. Just add some of that softer red in this transition between the really far, diff far away flowers and the closer ones. flowers here. I'm going to put my fingers there so I don't do it because I keep like filling in all of my holes. I'm really bad about that. Look, I want the flowers to go everywhere and then don't leave enough like empty spaces between them. So I'm going to deliberately leave a bunch of space there between these kind of distant ones here and my foreground. I want my foreground ones to be kind of clustered in a line almost. We can have a few kind of down low, but Right here. Okay. 
lot of clubbing paint on there. And these ones in the foreground, we can do multiple dabs. So I don't want to, you know, I can do two or three dabs on one flower to get a little bit bigger shape and more kind of structured. So it looks more flower like, maybe. If you did the woman in the poppy field, this is very similar to that painting as far as the way we, you know, did it. This is even more poppies, I think, than that one was. More visible. And, um... There are a little bit bigger flowers back in here that I'm, made them a little too small. Oh. In there makes some of these bigger some of the big ones are going to be showing up higher in our foreground because they're taller than others so there can be some of these larger flowers in some of these areas all right I'm gonna use the ultramarine blue Quinacridone magenta. More magenta than blue. And add a little bit of white. We're going to add some of that in here. Some of these have kind of purpley glow to them. I think they're, I don't know why, but. Might be another flower in there, but it looks like they're the, they might be dying. I don't know. Adding a little bit more white there to soften it up. I'm just going to go in here and dab it on and around some of these flowers. No, thinking. Sorry. Got my thinking cap on. Look at this. Just trying to figure out the colors here. Alright, so I'm going to do some dark green with my purple and green. And I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to use my small round, my number one round here. Maybe a little bit blue. I added purple. There we go. And I'm gonna hold my brush this way and I'm just gonna do little dabs of like little, those little seed pods that are happening. And the ones far back here are gonna be smaller than my flowers, so just keep them really tiny. And We can do some of them with the lighter yellow. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> can you imagine? Canvas tap and tap, tap, tap. <laughs> and I can put in some little stems if I need to. Trying to keep them random. That one got a little bit big there. my liner brush. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that glazing liquid there and some water. When you're liner brush you need your paint to be almost like ink consistency so I want it really thin. Thin down. I'm going to add a lot of blue. I want kind of a, almost a teal color to my grass. Very, very thin. I'm using a Ten aught round or ten aught liner brush here. This is where I can kind of be a little bit more purposeful with my flower stems and things in this foreground area. Just using this kind of flicking motion. And I can go over the top of some of my flowers too that I've already done. Some of those grasses are covering over some of them. to some of my dabs. Not all of them, but really bright yellow grass color. Pretty similar to what we were using before, only I want to go a little bit brighter even with it. And do some grasses with this. And some of these grasses have like seed, like they're, um, they have seed heads on them, 
It's like wheat. They could do some of those too if you wanted to. Get fancy with it. Is that the correct plural for grass? Grasses? Grasses. I think so. Grasses is uh, a like gra- different kind of grasses. Like, that's what you would say. So I'm just going to wiggle this brush and create some random shapes with it. Doesn't have to really make sense, but I just want to break up this kind of sameness going on in the grass. It's looking too kind of perfect, like lined up and everything. I don't know, it's bugging me. So I'm going to just use this brush and kind of mess it up a little bit. Use some different colors to do that and just kind of go in here. Now Now that I kind of have my flowers in here, I can kind of go in between and around them. You can go over the top of them if you want to. Whatever. But there's all kinds of crisscrossy things happening and things overlapping other things and such. So just going to kind of replicate that. This is definitely not like super ultra realistic t- style. Down here I'm being a little bit more kind of impressionistic I think. But I like it better a little bit. You can keep yours however you want. You know, you can do whatever style you like with yours. So if you want to keep it a little bit more controlled, you can leave it before I'm doing this thing. But I like the kind of randomness of this look. A little bit more of that green. A little bit of burnt umber. There's some sort of warmer grasses. So let's get some like You were right again. Burnt sienna. What? Grasses. Yeah, grasses. Uh-huh. Why you didn't think I was right? Obviously not if you looked it up. <laughs> One of these days you will be wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying. Vocab vocab is gonna be hard to hard to beat me. On math you got me beat. Vocabulary, I don't I don't know. I read a lot more than you do. So We're not finished with our poppies, so if you're like, those poppies don't look very good, then that's, it's okay. We'll get there. Just working on our grasses here, trying to get them kind of looking a little bit closer to what I want them to look like. brush and I'm just gonna grab some of this kind of dark green color we got going on here and just tap in some kind of random um, almost leaf shapes not quite but sort of like that just tapping kind of flatly on here to get some little Side, mixing that in, Got more of a golden color. Here we go. I 
I feel like I'm not really happy with any of this glass in here today. Don't know why it's caused me issues, but. gonna keep adding more colors to it until I like it. What you thinking, hun? Everybody in chat now is trying to earworm each other. What do you mean? Well, of course I started it. Going with ultramarine blue here with white. Well, of course you did, because they're an instigator. So back when you picked up your number one round brush, uh -huh. I put that in chat, number one round. Right. Then my next comment was, right round, round, round. <laughs> and now people are just trying to earworm each other with... You spin me Come right round, right round. And we're we're gonna put somebody local who lives in Arkansas here on time out if she mentions Baby Shark one more time. I <laughs> I have not watched Baby Shark. Somebody told you were telling me yesterday that I need to watch it. So no, 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 no. No, I told you not to. Not to. It's evil. It's evil. Okay. Ultramarine blue here. This is this is helping. What's going to do is pull down those colors down here. It's actually in my grass colors, in my picture. So I'm not making this up. But it's actually I would do this anyways, just to kind of pull some of the sky colors down into my foreground. It helps sort of merge. Everything and then and if you're you know if you're putting colors on like I'm putting this layer of color on and uh, like it's not showing up then that means your background is too close to whatever color you're trying to put on there so if you're trying to put a color on and you're like it's not showing up then it's probably because your value and your background color is too close to it. So just grab some of that darker color. I'm gonna grab a little bit of teal here. Maybe a little bit of burnt umber to darken it up. I'm just gonna add some really dark teal areas in my, and that may be what is bugging me is that it's too samey. Same old, same old, it's not got a lot of value change. So let's darken up some of these areas so it's got a little bit more depth. And I'm going right over the top of my poppies. I can always go back in. I'm probably going to go back in and darken back up my poppies uh, that I'm covering. Some of them. But some of them I won't. You know, some of them I'll leave with the grasses over the top. So this is really not something that um, I would have done differently. I would still be doing this. I might have saved some of my reds like done done a few of them and then intentionally covered them and then and then done a few more you know um so that would be a way of doing it yeah let's get some of that yellow where that was from Doing some little yellow dabs now. And I think I will um, maybe even glaze a little bit in my in my grasses to darken them up even more later. But right now I'm gonna add 
some kind of a bright fuchsia, this magenta color to my cadmium red to make a kind of a more of a wine colored red and we're going to use that. And like I said, I'm not going to cover over everything that I've already done, but I am going to darken up some of these poppies that are here. Give them a second layer, a little bit more depth, and then do some that are just this color too. But this gives, uh, you can look at your poppies in the picture. There's like these dark, you know, centers. So this is what we're doing. We're adding the dark shadows through, through them. the sky. I think the sky is looking good. Poppies are getting there. They're getting closer. I promise you we'll get there. It's just going to take a minute. We're at two hours, so we should be getting close to ending here. I've got a little bit of cadmium red light. Now I'm adding to the white, or actually I used the unbleached titanium so it wasn't like super bright in your face white. And I'm going to use that around the sides of some of my poppies here. little bit lighter. Around the tops and the sides of some of these poppies. And then these ones in here that are really far away. I'm going to highlight them. They're catching a lot of light, so pay attention to what side is closest to that sun and highlight that side. So these ones on this side are going to get highlighted over here maybe where they're closer to the sun. And then let's add some of this bright color back in there. pretty color. This is what will really start to make them look more realistic. So now they're going to start looking like, okay, they make more sense visually with all of these highlights and things in them happening. And I'm leaving some of these covered by, by grasses, so don't cover up all of that grass that's covering up your flowers, just find a spot where you can fit that in. And some of them, it doesn't have to be all of them. They're not all going to be getting sunlight. Some of them are going to be down lower where there, there's not as much light. So I need to work on that. There's a, like a area there where I kind of mushed my flowers up. So I'm just going to put another big flower right there. is much better now that I kind of mushed them up and made them more messy. Much happier. Yeah. These are really fun to paint. I really love painting puppies. They're really fun flower to do. They're very kind of forgiving. They do all kinds of weird shapes so you can get away with all kinds of, you know, strange dabs and dots and things. Don't have to be too precise about it. They're not fussy. You know, I think roses are a little bit more fussy. They have to be 
look a certain way for you to be able to tell their flowers. Puppies are just kind of happy. I don't know. I just sort of it sort of works. Okay, I'm going to make a light pink here. The Quinacridone magenta and white. Bright pink. And I'm going to touch up on these purpley colored flowers with that. Not all of them, but just a few of them. Just a little highlight. Put some of that up in here. Maybe put a little bit of it on a few of my poppies. There we go. probably going to be dark enough but and I'm going to go in here and this is where I'm going to be kind of more deliberate I'm going to go in and darken up the bottoms of some of these where they're overlapping one another or we're seeing the bottom of the flower there's a shadow right at the bottom And be careful not to do this too big. I might even add a little bit of the quinacridone magenta just so it's a little bit toned down. It's not on all the flowers, but a lot of these ones in the foreground, you're going to be able to see this. So, just going to do a little dot, dot at the bottom of the flower on a few of them. some kind of random like like the little seed pots too brighter than the first highlight color. Mixing up some cadmium yellow light with my green here. I 
still had a little bit of red in my brush, so it kind of toned it down a little bit. I just want a light yellowish color, and I'm just going to go in here and kind of scribble in just a little bit right in here. in here. And I'm kind of going over the top of my, whoops, I just took off a bunch of my paint. There you go, that was for you, Mark. Just lightening it up right here close to the sun here and then I'm gonna glaze over that area too just trying to get a little bit lighter I should I, I really should have left like a little area down here I didn't notice until I got those poppies painted in that there's like this area behind the poppies right in here is a little bit lighter which is fine we can we can glaze it in later when we do our glazing on our sun. I'm going to do a few like random grasses here, really thin, different directions. And if you're worried about stems to your poppies, you can add stems too. Like making sure that they each have a connected to something. I'm, I don't usually worry about it when it's this jumbled up, but it, since they've got these dark spots here, some of these ones maybe might help to add some stems coming down off of them. brush here, this 3 8 inch angle, and I'm going to use some of my Indian yellow hue, there's some glazing liquid if I can get some that's not dirty there, alright, I'm going to glaze over those clouds right in here. Gonna brighten them up a little bit. Just right in here. Somebody's asked, would it be best to dry the painting before glazing? Yes. Yes, for sure. Yeah, so I wouldn't do these clouds. That's why I waited until these clouds were fully dry to do this. Because I don't want to do that. I'm going to grab a little bit of the zinc white here. I'm going to go over. Let's use the let's use this stickler. Is there a magic formula? ratio for glaze to paint? 
Um, it depends on how much paint you want to lay down, you know, in an area. So here, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't need to really darken the color at all, you know, like darken the values at all. All I wanted to do is add a little bit of the tint of color so it has a lot of glaze in, in it versus paint. Um, but if I wanted to darken up an area, I would add or, you know, really show up, I would add more paint. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's probably like, I would say, um, one part paint to, you know, five parts glaze or something like that. It's like very little paint to glaze to get it, to get where you want it to look. I'm going to use this pink white here with my yellow and I'm just kind of. And I'm not worried about going over the top of my flowers. In fact, I want to do that, especially right in here. I'm going to grab that zinc white and my white, and hopefully that's dry enough. And I'm going to go right over my flowers. Just right there. You can go down as far as you want, but I just wanted a little bit of glow right there on my flowers and then I need some more of that bright white. I've got a question here. Okay. It says, uh, to make the sun itself glow, mm -hmm. would you keep layering lighter yellows? They're trying to figure out how to make the sun pop. Well, I'm gonna put in a little bit of white here. Bright, really bright. And then I'm going to use this kind of damp brush and just tap around the edges of it. Just kind of pull it out. And just using what's left of my brush there. So that having a little bit of contrast between your sun and your sky will help. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow right around it and I don't ever do like a perfect circle on my sun because usually it's not it, you know it's, it's going to the rise and it kind of smushes itself so it never like looks perfectly circular so I don't ever really do a circle maybe grab a little bit of this unbleached titanium here mix that with that yellow and just using it in here. Oops, sorry, hon. I didn't know you were zoomed in so far. I was trying to let them see the sunny part where you were uh, doing it. So could you pretend to do that again so everybody sees it? <laughs> some really bright you can see how even you know these areas that looked really bright when we first put them on they kind of they darken as they dry so even these whites we can go back in here and brighten them up with another layer and if you want to you can use like a more opaque color like I've got a little bit of unbleached titanium on here so it's gonna be a little bit more opaque when it dries then the zinc white. I still would do most of your flat your clouds with the zinc white and just add, you know, layer upon layer to get the the brighter. But like in the areas like up in here where you need it to be really bright, you can you can use a little bit of titanium white. Just be really careful with it. And use it uh, kind of on the inside of your line so I don't go right to the edge of my cloud with it. I might go just above it. 
so that soft line is is against the sky. pure white I, it's it's turning it's picking up the colors already in my brush so it's not pure white even though it may look like it yeah just doing really bright highlights just along that leading edge is closest to the Sun using glazing liquid just to kind of soften those edges up a little bit. looking at my reference photo back and forth now and just kind of seeing any little areas where maybe the value needs to be a little bit lighter or darker whatever in my clouds here so I'm just adding last little bits of detail See how we faded this out so that this gray by the time it gets down close to our sun it's almost almost white that gives it that depth an X-wing there for in the May the fourth, or I don't know. Or actually, I feel like we need to watch a Star Wars movie tonight. I think there should be two suns because this is on Tatooine, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe, honey. I don't know. <laughs> this is silly. Okay use this and make my little grass heads. I think it'll make kind of the random shapes in here. C-3PO standing, talking on his phone. Like he's lost? Yeah. Add it to your series. Oh, like like the <laughs> Runaway Brides? <laughs> so have him like with his back towards us here? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like it. Good idea, honey. All right, so if you want to, at the very end here, we can... Well, I keep running out of glazing liquid.
glazing liquid and I can go in here and kind of glaze in some of these fields. You may not need to, you know, this is just up to you, but if you feel like you want some of these areas to be a little bit darker, you can go in here, you can even go over the top of your poppies if you want to or not, but you see the area that I did it here. This just gives it a little bit of depth in here. Just gonna manipulate the, the values just a little bit. Use a lot of glazing liquid here just to kind of spread it out. You can see the texture of the grasses underneath, so we're not taking away any of that. We're just kind of adding some shadowed areas here. I'm going to take a clean towel and just dab over. And wipe it off of any of the areas that I don't want it. There we go. And do some down low here. Maybe that corner is a little bit darker. Use a little bit of magenta. Okay, I don't I don't think I need to do much more than that. I think we're pretty close. using clean white clean water here tapping over use some of my bright red and I do one more layer of color on a few of these poppies This is cadmium red light, uh, red medium. Here, just that really bright poppy red. One last little And some cadmium red light here. Doing some of them over here. This is just our little final, final finishing touches here. Just looking at my flowers and making sure they all Kind of makes sense.
So if you add any new ones, you might want to go back in and add a little bit of magenta to them just to, you know, make them be part of the rest. Have a little highlight or shadow or whatever. I think we're good. I'm going to call that done. I'm pretty happy with it. Fun. <clears throat> I feel like I could probably even even have made some of these bigger in the foreground here to really exaggerate the size change. Maybe pick a few of them and draw them out a little bit bigger. Not even the hint of Yoda's head sticking out through the flowers. <laughs> Sorry, hon. Oh, okay. Not this time. Help us, NG1. You're our only hope. <laughs> NG1. I like that. <laughs> Have you been saving that all the whole show? I'll put two honey buns on my head and say it. <laughs> Help us, NG1. Okay, see, I keep doing this. I, I keep put, adding more flowers until there's not going to be any space the left between them. Brush down. Okay, I'm going to stop. Let's sign it. <laughs> 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 that still doesn't mean I won't touch it, but it's, yeah, a, it's yeah, at I, least a step in the right direction. I'm going to get you right? thinking about other things here in a moment. Okay. Oh, no, I can't sign it. It's too wet. I'll have to use a brush. What were you going to say? I'm going to get you thinking about other things. Like what? Like sponsors and stuff. Ah, yes. Thank you. Um, oh, I left my white oh, cap off. Oh, great. My white. Um, that's been out there for a while, too. <coughs> Let me get the smaller brush. I can't do it with that. I find that I've, it's a little bit easier to sh to sign with a shorter liner. So this is a 10, 18 aught short liner. I, find, I, I like it a lot for signing so signatures. But um, if you missed it earlier, if you're just joining us, or if you need a reminder, we are. Uh, this video today was sponsored by Wix. And um, if you want to. to start your own website you could do a portfolio of your paintings or soccer team or whatever i mean you there's all kinds of you could if you're selling stuff on etsy you can uh, link up your um, stores to give you a little bit more uh, room to do some interesting designs whatever whoops i just felt i can't talk and, and sign my name at the same time um I tried to spell it with A N G L. -E. Uh, anyhow, you go to that link there, and it's down in the description too. Wix dot com slash go slash Angela Anderson and and um, you can sign up for your own website if you want to. I'm glad I did it. <laughs> it's going to be really nice. I hopefully make it a lot easier for my patrons to find traceables like the one we'll have available for this uh, over at patreon.com um, slash Angela Fine Art. So, uh, or if you want to go to my website, it's uh, Thankful Art, my new website, thankfulart.com, thankfulart.com. And uh, the traceable will be there as well, the link to the traceable. And if you're not a Patreon member, it'll ask you to sign up before you download it. So um, you can go straight there and do it from there. All right. Thanks for joining us today. Really fun one. Hopefully you stuck with me for the two and a half hours. <laughs> and uh, 
uh, try it yourself. It's it's a it's a fun one, I think. And uh, we'll be back on Tuesday night with another video. We're going to be painting some daisies in a field with a. It's going to be kind of a simple uh, daisy field with uh, some large daisies and a little ladybug on one of the daisies. So it'll be cute. And uh, I'm going to a concert tomorrow night. So, or not tomorrow night. No, Monday night. Monday. So Monday you're going to drive in Tuesday. I'm going to drive in Tuesday. Do the show. Yep, and do the show. Just like <laughs> just like a real star. Right. <laughs> Traveling from city to city. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, so much. We'll see you next time. Bye.